Today we're diving into an important topic that in my opinion often gets overlooked, a clean and safe workflow for resin printing. Resin printing can yield stunning results, but it's crucial to remember that the process between the resin bottle and the finished model can be messy, smelly and potentially harmful if proper precautions aren't taken. I want to share with you my clean and efficient workflow while emphasizing the importance of safety. The reason I'm making this video is that I've noticed a concerning lack of respect for safety measures among some content creators in our community. For example, I recently came across a YouTube channel with thousands if not hundreds of thousands of subscribers where the guy was washing his uncured prints with bare hands. And while it is acceptable to take risks in your private space, promoting unsafe practices in public videos, at least for me, is a no-go. Now I would like to know from you, where would you place yourself on the resin precaution scale? From someone casually eating off a resin printed plate to someone suiting up with a hazmat suit before opening an Amazon package with resin in it. Let me know in the comments. I'm probably around here. I'd rather take too much than too little precaution. Let's start by talking about the resin itself. I compared the safety data sheets of any cubic standard resin, eco resin and water washable resin. I assume it's almost the same for other brands, I just used the standard resin from Anycubic. And it turns out one is not really healthier than the other. All of them can cause skin irritation, allergic skin reactions and serious eye and respiratory irritations. The printing resin is considered a sensitizer, which means that over time and exposure your body could potentially create an allergic reaction. They are all toxic to aquatic life with long-lasting effects, which is why you should never ever pour any resin contaminated liquid down the drain. What was interesting for me here was that the so-called echo resin is not only toxic, but very toxic. When it comes to precautionary statements, one difference between the resins is that for the water wash resin it doesn't say to avoid breathing vapors. But although it doesn't say avoid breathing vapors, it also says use only outdoors or in a well-ventilated area, just like the other two. And to wear protective gloves, clothing and eye plus face protection. As far as the other lines go, I don't know if they just forgot it for the water washable resin, but I would assume that you should also wash your eyes and skin with water when you had contact there as well. Don't take IPA to wash resin from your skin. The IPA will actually help the resin molecules to sip through your skin, take cold water and soap. To sum it up, the exclamation mark symbol indicates that a substance may cause irritation, skin sensitization, acute toxicity or other hazards that are not severe enough to warrant the skull and crossbone symbol for dangerous substances. Which I guess is a good sign for us. It could be worse. Now let's dive into the personal protective equipment before we start with the printing. Forget about those latex gloves and paper masks that come with your printer, they won't provide proper protection. Although latex gloves will keep your hands dry, the resin molecules can still sip through the material quickly. Instead, opt for nitrile gloves. I take those disposable ones that I only wear one time and then I use another pair of thick nitrile gloves that I wear multiple times. This choice is due to their superior wrist coverage and resistance to tearing when handling with resin supports that sometimes can get really sharp and pointy. I wouldn't trust those disposable thin gloves here. And to protect your lung, use a half or full face mask with an organic fume filter. I recently switched to a full mask because I had the problem with safety goggles that they always fucked up. Remember it's crucial to safeguard your eyes too, especially when removing supports that can fly around. Accidents can and will happen, but by following these safety precautions we can minimize any risk. Let's do a quick check in, what kind of personal protective equipment do you use when you work with resin? Now let me show you my resin printing workbench. It's essential to have a well organized and clean workspace. I have my printer inside an airtight DIY IKEA enclosure with a fan that I use to suck out the air before I open the enclosure after printing. Also right next to my printer I have my paper towel roll since you can never have enough paper towels. Then I have an aluminum foil pan where the printed part will go, a small trash can for used paper towels and a black box where I store the parts after printing for a few days before washing and curing. Firstly I use a pair of disposable nitrile gloves which are discarded after each use, followed by an apron that provides protection against resin or IPA spills and airborne support. Then I put on my thicker gloves where I always wear the right glove first which ensures that the inside is never touched by the other glove that might have been contaminated. I always shake the resin bottles in the plastic bag they are shipped with. If there is resin that sipped down the bottleneck it will land in the plastic bag and not somewhere else. After shaking the bottle I put it aside for a second and use a silicone spatula to gently inspect the vet's bottom by feeling for any cured resin remnants adhering to the fab from the previous print. 
If I feel something sticking to the vet, I utilize the tank cleaning function. Then I pour in the resin and by turning the bottle when it's enough, I minimize the amount of resin that will flow down the bottleneck. Next I perform a crucial step, verifying the resin's temperature. Considering the workshop temperature was around 15 to 16 degrees Celsius during the printing process, the resin was too cold. To check the temperature, I remove the contaminated cloth from my left hand and use an infrared thermometer, which reveals that the resin initially had 14 degrees Celsius. Then I'm using a heat gun, simultaneously steering the resin and also applying heat to the build plate. After approximately 3 or 4 minutes, the resin reaches an optimal temperature of about 27 degrees. I have found that a separate heater is not necessary with this approach, as the heat generated during the curing process, at least when the build plate is quite full, maintains the resin's temperature, at least for a room temperature of 15 to 16 degrees. When it's freezing cold, I just don't print anymore. Following this, I read on the glove, lower the build plate, remove excess resin from the spatula and securely place it into a foil pan using a paper towel for protection. And then I start the print. I take the same paper towel to clean the spatula, discarding it in the trash can to later cure it. It is essential not to throw away any uncured resin. When the printer is done, I re-glove and allow the fan to extract fumes for a few minutes before opening the door. While holding the pan as close as possible to the vet, I ensure that no resin drips onto the printer or the floor. After closing the door, I carefully remove the printed parts by strategically distributing the load on the corner of the build plate while maintaining balance. I minimize stress on the ball bearing, which minimizes the risk of unleveling the build plate. I don't even know when I had to re-level my build plate the last time. But that's something you only need to worry about if you have a ball joint like the Elegoo Saturn. So with not a lot of force, I'm going around the parts, searching for spots where I can get under the raft easily and do that until the part basically falls from the plate. I always print with a thin raft because the supports don't snap and fly around as easily as if they are not attached to anything. After the parts are down the plate, it's also really important to make sure that not a single solid resin part is still attached to the build plate or you could destroy your fab sheet with the next print. After I made sure of that, the build plate goes back into the printer. And then I'm removing the supports. I'm not taking warm water for that, which a lot of people recommend, because then I would have to deal and get rid of resin contaminated water in addition to the IPA I have to deal with. And I don't have warm water in my basement anyway. Instead, I'm using a heat gun to quickly warm up the parts. But be cautious, it really just takes a few seconds and the whole print becomes soft. Now I'm putting on another pair of nitrile gloves and carefully remove the supports. This is basically the only part in the process where I have direct contact with uncured resin. When the supports are warmed up, they are pretty soft and they usually break without flying around, but it still can happen sometimes. To avoid that, you could also use a clear freezer bag, put your part in it and remove the supports from outside the bag. If I do have flying resin parts, I directly pick them up and clean the area with a paper towel and alcohol. Because if I don't do it directly, I might forget it later. Once I'm done, I'm carefully removing the gloves, but not inside out, since I want to cure them later, along with all the other trash, to dispose them safely. And then I'm taking those barbecue pliers to put the parts into my plastic box, and then there they sit until I clean them. I do like to let them sit for a while. For these Spider-Man parts, you can see how much resin has dripped off after letting them sit for a few days. So that's all resin that doesn't end up in my IPA when I wash the parts, which would be the next step. And with that, my printing process is covered. Let me know in the comments if you are interested to see how my wash and cure process looks like. Thank you for watching and safe printing.